Welcome to another episode of Isabel Explains. I am making this video because I see so much confusion when it comes to learning the parts of a cell. Better yet, learning what part goes in what cell. Because you can memorize organelles all day. But if you're talking about prokaryotes, well, for the most part, you just wasted your time. I understand that learning biology can be a challenge for two main reasons. One, biology is a very complex subject that involves living things, chemistry, physics, and a little bit of wagadoodle. Two, because everything in biology has a fancy name that is so difficult to pronounce, let alone remember. Unfortunately, there is no way around that. But ain't nobody stopping you from giving them nicknames. Today, I will show you the hack that helped me, one of the people with the worst memory in the planet, remember what organelle does what and where they're found. I promise, you'll never forget. The first thing that we have to realize when it comes to biology is that we're really a larger version of what each smaller component of us is. For example, the reason why we breathe oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide is because that's what our cells do at a molecular level. They collect oxygen, gather the energy they can from it, and the waste product of that process is carbon dioxide. So we exhale it. Cool, huh? We can even get a little more philosophical about that and say that a city is just a larger version of what each individual in the city is. If we have hardworking people, the result is a very productive city. If we have polluting people, what we have is an unhealthy city. And that's exactly how I want you to think of each cell in your body. Each one of your cells is just a tiny version of you, which in turn is a tiny version of the city you live in. Each cell has organs that we call organelles because they all have a very specific function just like each of your organs do. They also have a very specific role just like every city structure does, right? We have hospitals, police stations, fire stations, power plants, post offices, a government, an army, and most of all, we have people with different jobs. Now, some cities or towns are more sophisticated than others, right? Not all cells have every single organelle there is to have, and if they do, it's not on the same amount. It depends on what that city is known for. Some cities are known for their farming, some are known for their factories, some are known for their art. Therefore, the amounts of farms, factories, and art galleries are not going to be the same in all of them. Same goes for all your cells and all the cells in the world. By now, I hope you know that a cell is the smallest unit of life. Without cells, organisms wouldn't exist. Just like without atoms, matter wouldn't exist. The thing is that not all organisms are made of the same kinds of cells. Some organisms are made of just one cell, and that's it. They're like a tiny island that is like all one city and all one country all at the same time. Now that we understand what a cell is, let's dive in deeper into what it means to be a tiny little city. The first thing that we need to know is that there are two different types of cells that exist in nature. They're called prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Fancy, huh? Prokaryotes are unsophisticated cities that don't really have any form of buildings, aka membrane-bound organelles, but they're so efficient that they are capable of governing themselves as one full organism, even though they don't even have an executive office, aka a nucleus. So what do they have? First of all, like any cell, they have a cell membrane, aka a city limit, a cytoplasm, the ground where everything is built, including like roads and train tracks, and genetic material in the form of DNA, aka a government. They also have ribosomes, which I like to think of as schools, and a nucleus-like structure called a nucleoid, which contains all or most of its generic material. By the way, the suffix oid in a scientific word is just a fancy term for the word wannabe. Just thought you should know that. They also have a cell wall, kind of like the Great Wall of China, but in their case, they need it for two reasons. One, for protection from when they're under attack, and two, because of the places they live at. Let me explain. There are two subcategories for prokaryotes that we call domains. They are bacteria and archaea. No, not the furniture store. This is science, remember? We gotta spell it all weird. Bacteria, contrary to popular belief, are rarely harmful to humans or other organisms, and they play a very significant role in the cycling of nutrients. They also live in crazy places in the world, like your gut and dead plants. Archaea, however, live in the craziest places in the world, like hydrothermal vents and hot springs. They literally define the limits of life. Now, depending on where they live, some prokaryotes may have other additional structures like flagella, which gives them motility, or pili, which is what I like to call their sexual organoid. See what I did there? In some cases, even a capsule, like the dome in the Black Panther movie. The last thing that I wanna point out about prokaryotes is that because they are all made by just one cell, they have no choice but to reproduce asexually, mainly by a method that we call binary fission, where literally the cell just splits in half and boom, you got two cells now. 
I call the pili a wannabe sexual organ because it's the only form of DNA transfer they have between organisms, which is actually pretty cool. They're like, hey man, you're protected against antibiotics? No. Well, here you go. You're welcome. It's pretty cool, but it's actually pretty scary. <laughs> Ever heard of developing antibiotic resistance? That's how that happens. Now, let's talk about eukaryotes, these sophisticated cities. They have the whole shebang. They have buildings, a structured government, universities, you name it. They're way more complex and therefore much bigger than prokaryotes. They're between 20 to 100 times bigger than a prokaryotic cell, which makes sense because they gotta fit all these complicated structures in it, right? As of now, there's only one eukaryotic domain called eukarya, which is divided into four subcategories that we call kingdoms. These kingdoms have what we know as animals, plants, fungi, and protists. This last one I like to call the miscellaneous group because it literally contains all the organisms that just don't fit in the other kingdoms. So what kind of structures do eukaryotes have? First of all, like prokaryotes, eukaryotes have organisms that are made of just one cell, or are unicellular. But they also have organisms that are made of multiple cells, which are multicellular, like us. Those that are made of just one cell can only reproduce by splitting in half, like prokaryotes. But this time through a process called mitosis, not binary fission. It's a technicality, really. Of those that have multiple cells, some can reproduce sexually and some asexually. I'll make another video about that. Now, let's dive into the eukaryotic cell structure. For one thing, they have a true nucleus, like an executive office, or like the presidential office, which means that their DNA is protected by a physical barrier from the rest of the cytoplasm. The other key buildings in the eukaryotic cell are the endoplasmic reticulum, which I like to think of as a neighborhood. The rough side has the schools. Yeah, teachers have it tough. And the smooth side doesn't. The mitochondria, which is the bank, I refer to it as the bank, some people refer to it as a power plant, the Golgi apparatus, which is a post office, and lysosomes, which are like a recycling plant. In my analogy, there are four kinds of people, which are referred to as micromolecules. They are proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids. They all play a different role in the cell, and they are all very important. Today, I'm only going to talk about two of them, proteins and nucleic acids, but I wanted to make sure that you knew about the other two. Proteins are like professional people with jobs and are made by ribosomes. Ergo, why I refer to ribosomes as schools because they turn amino acids, which are proteins building blocks, into proteins that perform specific tasks. And the nucleic acids are the politicians. We have two kinds of nucleic acids, not, not Republican and Democrat. <laughs> we have the DNA and the RNA. The DNA people only live and work at the executive office. They never leave and the RNA people have many tasks. And one of them is to assign college degrees to amino acids in the cell as direct orders from the executive office. It's a weird regimen. It's kind of like when Moana was forced to be a chief, kind of like that. Now, just like with prokaryotes, organisms that live in specific places and cells that perform specific tasks will have certain additional organelles. For example, animals and some plants will have peroxisomes, which is kind of a different recycling plant. Plants and other photosynthetic organisms have chloroplasts, which are like power plants that produce energy from the sun. Plants also have a huge water dam that we call a vacuole, which literally just holds a ton of water. I mean, not ions and stuff, but mainly water. Some animals, protists, and even fungi have flagella, which is a long tail that they use as propeller to move forward. As you get more familiar with each cell, you'll realize that all these structures are always going to be aligned with the function of the cell and the environment that they live. Now, I know that this is not a super perfect model because what kind of city has a tail that helps it move? That'd be kind of cool, actually. Plus, when you start talking about more specific terminology, the roles for each building in the city may not match. For example, the assigning of college degrees to amino acids is actually a process called translation because the information from an RNA molecule Molecule is going to be translated into a protein. So either way you want to think about it is fine. But the point is that you have to think about the cell as one system with components that interact and depend on each other. You can think of it as a city or a body, a factory, a computer, a business. It's up to you. You can be as creative as you want. Just make sure that you choose a model that you are familiar with. Also make sure you don't write the word wannabe on the test and you'll be good. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so other students can find it easier. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do it down below and I will see you next time. Cut it, cut it. Go back, go back out. We're really 
a large version of each smaller component of us is. What? That is a mouthful. I don't know who wrote that. I hated that take. Let's go back. If we have a hardworking people, I don't know why I say a hardworking people. Uh, move your face. They also have a specific. Specific. Yeah. I have a. Each cell has. Same goes for all the, your cells. Same goes for all your cells. I have an itch on my foot. <laughs> Therefore, the amount of farms, factory, and agar factories. By now, I hope that you know that. Uh, so now that we are, boy, that was like so. I'm not sure if I like that take. They have no choice but to reproduce asex asexually, not asexually. Whew, can't talk today. I was gonna say spitting in half. I was like, that doesn't make sense. They spit in half. <laughs> there are two subcategories for prokaryotes that we call domains. There are bacteria and are they are now there are. The other key buildings in the eukaryotic cell are the endoplasm. These are hard words to pronounce. Remember, that's what I said. Let me do that again because I'm, I'm scratching my nose. And are made of ribosomes. Are made by ribosomes. Animals and some plant cells will have. Let me do the whole thing again. <laughs> that was awful. What kind of city has a hell? A, a hell. <sighs> okay, never mind. I licked my lips there. <laughs> Let's go back. Now, thank you so much for watching, blah, blah, blah. That should be fine. Moving on. Do you see the freaking hair that keeps tickling my arm? Oh, got it.